All right, welcome back. It's still the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa, and we are going to off the press. And joining us this morning is the Chief Lecturer at the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, uh, G.D. Johnson. Uh, he will be uh, looking at all of uh, the issues on the front dailies of the papers uh, this morning. Uh, Mr. Johnson, good morning to you. Many thanks for joining us on Breakfast this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Justin, and good morning, Anita. Good morning, Dr. Piers. It's a okay. pleasure to be with you. Yes, happy Friday. <laughs> yeah, it's Friday and we're thanking God. Thank God it's Friday and <laughs> Workers' Day is tomorrow, so... Yeah, we that's true. Workers' Day is tomorrow, yeah. May 1st. Yes. All right, uh, we'll kick it off uh, from the from the Punch uh, News uh, paper this morning. What a banner headline this morning. Senate summons minister at a hero over uh, 199 billionaire anti-terror uh, fund spending. Uh, with two writers there, National Assembly Committee Chairman berates Ahmed for shunning invitation. Soldiers lamenting lack of weapons to fight insurgents alleges a uh, panel. All right, across uh, above the masthead, we're covering 94 trillion naira unremitted uh, fund solution to economic uh, crisis. That's according to uh, Falano. Also, just uh, beneath that, uh, false bank directors fired to protect customers, uh, minority uh, shareholders. That's according to the Central Bank of Nigeria. NSA dismisses threats uh, to airport NSCDC, uh, fortifies internal security. Just beside that, India experts warn of looming danger as U.S. director citizens to uh, leave. Okay, we have uh, more stories on the front page of the Punch newspaper this morning. Okay, let's see. Uh, Fraud allegation second as uh, the man's apology, uh, one billion naira from ex uh, Oshamalism aid. All right, painter or painter in person. Okay, I can't really see that. Okay, painter uh, in personality, all right, a writer, or by a legacy. Or impersonation, rather. A painter impersonates or by a legacy uh, the fraud Facebook uh, lover of uh, 51 uh, million naira. Uh, God has directed me to prophesy against uh, Uzodema. That's uh, also on the front page of the Punch uh, newspaper. Uh, Mr. Johnson, I'm sure you'd want to comment on the. Yes, just after we go through the mm. rest of the papers. Mm -hmm. NNPC, this is on the Nation newspaper. NNPC memo Governors seek end to patrol subsidy. The writer reads Federal government not moved by oil firms' letter. Labor awaits invitation for meeting. Above the headline, It's time for local government autonomy, says Jonathan. Mbaka slams political leaders over insecurity. How relatives, others exposed amputee hawker. 11 suspects arrested by Oyo Amotekun and OPC. Uh, we also see the story here. CBN Sachs First Bank Chair Awoshika Otudeko, others. And uh, Ade Duton back as MD and CEO. Below the headline on the Nation newspaper, Buhari sad over attacks by Autumn. We need cooperation, not antagonism. And still the stories here on the front page of the Nation newspaper. Court reopens in Lagos as Jusun suspends strike. And Monday is public holiday. Mm. So you take the next newspaper. <laughs> All right, we'll move on now to the Nation uh, newspaper. What? Uh... Okay, you just read that. Okay, we'll go to the Guardian this morning. Look beyond the uh, military in war against insecurity. EU tells uh, the federal government that's uh, making ban headlines here on the Guardian uh, this morning. As Africa faces COVID-19 resurgence, uh, WHO warns. All right, uh, a whole lot of stories are uh, making headlines uh, on the Guardian newspaper. Okay, let me take the rest. CBN Sachs, First Bank Board reinstates ousted MD. We saw the story below the headline on the Guardian newspaper. Senate demands arms expenditure from Ahmed Akabwezi Atahiru. Still below the headlines on the Guardian newspaper. Gunmen abduct two students in Plata State. And lastly, fire kills four, injures seven in rivers, illegal bunkering site. 
All right, Mr. Gideon Johnson, let's bring you back in here. Thanks for still staying with us uh, on Off the Press. We've seen, you know, quite a number of stories on the front page of, you know, the newspapers this morning. And one we've seen recurring is the one where the Central Bank of Nigeria, you know, sacked the chair, Awoshika, basically disbanding the whole board and uh, reinstating the, the former MD and CEO. Uh, what do you take of this move? Well, that's within the purview of Central Bank and um, their, their control over the um, monetary and financial sector in Nigeria. So uh, I'm sure it's it's an internal thing that requires uh, Central Bank supervision. And from their mm -hmm. explanation, they said they are trying to protect the minority mm -hmm. uh, shareholders. But in my own opinion, I think what the board at the end they should have done and their new a new management thing should have been put in place yeah, to solve that particular particular problem. Once you have a crisis between the management on one side and the board on the other, I think both if you are sacking the the board of directors are not appointed by central bank, they are appointed by the shareholders. But if central bank wants to win the big stick, I think both the MD and the and the and the board of directors should go at once so that you have a one first week and then you start all over on a fresh on a clean slate, and then you can look at the issues dispassionate. But if you are bringing the empty back in, it's not going to create further crisis within within that system. But that's something that has to do with um, one of the major operators in the in the banking sector in Nigeria. But let's look at something that affects every 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 one of us because when you have peace, that you have nation, is when security is in place mm -hmm. that then um, you can do you can do businesses. And you see the story in the Guardian, one striking story is the story in the Guardian and in the Punch newspaper in which the Senate summoned members of um, people in charge of the security apparatus of, of, of the nation, the, the Minister of Defense and the service and the service chief. And the Punch story goes, Senate summons um, Minister at Iron, 199 billion anti-terror, 199. And the Punch newspaper Give us a financial implication why the guidance just talked about demands explanation over expenditure. I think the power of the post belongs to belongs to the National Assembly. One of the failures we have had since 1999 is, and to a large extent, with this present National Assembly, to a large extent with this present moribund, clueless National Assembly, is that they have failed to do their own due diligence. When it comes to one, their invitations are not honored. I saw one 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 clip on TV the other time when the chief of the newly appointed chief of army staff appeared before the Senate and he was talking with arrogance. And he situates that with the way um, military chiefs in the United States of America, where they appear before the Congress in America, the, the kind of respect they give to the senators because the true representative of the people at the legislature and that's why at the at, 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 at the at the house of rep it is based on the population in the senate it is it is based on equality of states that's why three senator per state so that the people are highly represented and you have a situation whereby even the senate that have, that owns the power of the post when it comes to the appropriation bill it does not become a it does not become an act until it is passed by the National Assembly and assented to by the president. That's when you can justify that you can spend you can spend money. Now we have spent 199 billion on anti-terror and we have been terrorized. If mm -hmm. you look at another story in the Punch newspaper, communities in Niger State and Batu Niger communities negotiate with Boko Haram to pay 20 billion naira levy. Some parts of Nigeria are no longer under Nigeria as we speak. Hmm. I, I, I listen to during the course of the week, I listened to the governor of of Niger State where he was complaining that some local governments have been overrun by Boko Haram. And then you have 199 billion, and then you are having people in charge of spending this particular money hmm. not, not appearing before the Senate committee. It's, it's, it's pathetic. Hmm. In yeah. such situation, yeah. people should people should be held accountable. This is not 
a military regime. This is a democracy, and in democracy, civilian military hierarchy must be subservient. It's a requirement. Military hierarchy must be subservient to democratic control. It is it's required. So, Mr. Jide Johnson, in the light of these, yeah. these issues, you don't think um, it, it's justified for Reverend Fadambaka to say that, you know, what, what he's been saying, that God has directed him to prophesy against Buhari and Uzodima, asking them to there, resign? There's, there, there's no need, you see, for you to do what God has required you to do is you are trying to practice witchcraft. That's what um, the pro counselor of Covenant University said. He said, for man to expect God to do what he's supposed to do by himself, then he's practicing witchcraft. What do we expect God to do for us? He has given us the brain. He has given us the mandate. He has given us the power to do that. We have the institution. So you expect government, God to run the National Assembly? Do we have to wait for Father and backup for the National Assembly to commence whatever whatever instruments they have to bring about checks and balances in governance. All right, it is actually a very disheartening. President to explain or to start impeachment process or whatever is required for mm. them or whatever they think is appropriate at this point in time to hold the executive accountable. The president, governors, and the National Assembly saw an oath using either the Bible or the Quran. So you don't expect God. It's not God that created fan it was man it was all right god so, that created this it's not god that created the technology we are using it was man so god has given us capacity to do what is required part time to solve our problem so let's leave god out of it when people begin to bring god into it the, the bottom line is that it's clear for everybody to see you don't need god does not need to tell for that mbaka for us to know that something is wrong with this nation when it comes to security. all right all something right is wrong uh, with our economy. All right, uh, uh, Dr. Johnson, it is really worrisome that uh, we're talking about a 199 billion anti-terror you know, fund uh, when soldiers are actually lamenting lack of weapons. One wonders where all of this uh, money is uh, go to. But let's also talk about another issue that made a headline on the front page of the Punch newspaper, which is a fraud allegation that Uche Seconders is demanding apology and asking for one billion naira from ex or Shomola's aid. Political dramas. If you expect that, those are political dramas. Um, Secondos demanding um, compensation from or demanding one billion naira from the former aides of uh, the APC and back to the former APC chairman and former governor of the two state. So those those are required. Let's let them take those issues to court. The court will settle it. He, the burden of proof lies with him, and when the court rules over that, beyond them, beyond the rhetoric and the reportage we have in the front page of the newspaper, I think um, is that's left for the court to do. He knows the appropriate step to take, and I don't even think the media needs to play much emphasis with the with the issues affecting us. We're talking about secondos issue with um, um, um what's the name of this guy from Medusa? I can't recall this guy that worked. That used to be a spokesperson for Ibrahim Babangida. I can't recall his name now. So those are, as far as I'm concerned, if I'm the editor, I won't even bring this issue into the front burner. Mm. I won't even give it prominence in my page. These are political drama. Let them engage in their political drama. And let's look at serious issues that affect all, 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 all Nigerians. All right. All okay. Nigerians. All right. Well, one of these, you know, for very example, important the issues president, really... The president said, the president, there's a story in the Daily Sun. The president said to, to, to Otum, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in you. Uh, Buhar, the nation newspaper carried the same suit. Buhari said about if you are in Otom's position, how would you feel? Yeah. Practically, the state has been made ungovernable for him. There has not been a single prosecution. Single prosecution. And I start to be corrected on the menace and the reign of terror that has been unleashed on Benway State. Why should the president be sad? Why should he be angry? In actual sense, the president himself should be sad about the situation of things in Benway State, not to be sad with Otto. In, a, in actual sense, the president should commiserate with Otto on this matter. But the president is saying, I'm sad. 
let Mr. President also know that Nigerians are sad with the situation of security of the, 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 the nation of security in Nigeria. Nigerians are sad. It, now, well, we, we saw Mi, another story. Mi, Mr. Jide Johnson, actually, um, be, beyond the headlines, you know, reading the full statement of the president, he, he actually said he was pained by the violence, you know, and all of that. But we know that these are statements signed by his, you know, his media aides and all of that. You know, why? That's one of the reasons why Nigerians, you know, have been persistent about the president speaking for himself in addressing the nation. But moving on to another big story, really, we've seen. We know that the Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria, have, you know, have been protesting. They've been on a strike, saying they demand judicial autonomy. The president signed the executive order, but this has not been implemented. But the good news is they called off their strike after 23 days, and it seems that courts in Lagos can now reopen. Your thoughts on that, please? Justice delays, justice denied. And a situation whereby you have the arbiter of justice going on strike, that means that um, people seeking justice too uh, are, are, are in coma. They are, they are on strike. So cases that, are, that should have been attended to, people that have, should have been prosecuted, and people that should have been released uh, don't know their fate during the last 23 days. But mm -hmm. thank God, they've called off the strike. They, we don't need rocket science to solve this problem, judicial autonomy. The, look, there are three organs of government. The executive, in fact, first, the legislature, because the first organ of government is the legislature. The second organ of government is the executive. The third organ of government is the judiciary. You look at the structure, the arrangement the, in, in the constitution, whether the Nigerian constitution or the American constitution, because without the legislature, there would even be any society because it is believed in the legislature that comes up with the constitution. And it is the constitution that determines the shape of government. But we have a situation whereby the executive have become have become too powerful for other organs, organs, organs of government. We are we have been issues. We are having issues at the state level, mm -hmm. whereby the state governors have turned to emperor one. The the legislature is an extension of the office, while the judiciary is also an extension of the office. But I but I said this week, the president could solve this problem not by going to an executive order. The National Assembly is controlled by the APC. Just this executive order, turn it into an executive bill, put it before the National Assembly, let them debate on it and pass it as a bill. Then it becomes an act. You solve the problem. Executive order is laziness in terms of coming up with instrumentality of how to govern the state. It's a laziness on the part of of, of, of the executive, do the right thing, go through the process. You control both chambers. It's the same thing with the story we are hearing concerning the listing or not the listing the local government, where the former president was advising that's good luck to that time, advising the National, the National Assembly. Assembly not to delist the local government, to give autonomy back to the local government. After how many years of democracy, the local mm. government in Nigeria, which is the first year of government has no constitutional bearing. The 1999 constitution, as amended, did not make exclusive provision for local government administration in Nigeria. What we have is that the national, the, 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 the 1999 constitution gave that power to the state as of assembly. That's why at the local government level, we don't have democracy. All we right, have, Mr. Johnson. All right, an, an, another yeah, story, I'm another story that, um, that caught my uh, um, attention on uh, the Sun Asia on the state of um, Nigeria's economy right now. It was captioned the 2.1 billion Naira debt shrinking uh, a FAC uh, allocation crippled state with the right that their finance minister, army chief to face Senate and panel. My issue right now is that there's been so much talk about the nation's economy with uh, the revelation made by the Edo state governor. And right now we are having uh, 2.1 billion Naira debt uh, shrinking FAC allocation uh, crippling the state economy. I mean, where are we heading economically in Nigeria? When, when the Edo State Governor made that statement, what did we get from the National Assembly? What did we hear from the... Uh, we, have 30, we have 37 governors. 37 governors in Nigeria. One is a governor general. The others are governors of state. The governor general is the governor of Central Bank. That's what we use for the governor. The person I first responded to Edo State Governor was the governor of Central Bank. What did we hear from other governors? They didn't see anything. 
either to validate or invalidate the assertion or the claims of the Edo State Governor. It's very clear. You don't need rocket science to solve this particular problem. And to know that the economy is, is in a state of comatose. All you need to do is to get commodity price index and to get product index. Do a comparative analysis of what it used to buy a, a bag of rice in April and a bag of rice in January, a bag of cement, a, a, a kilo of sugar. You do all of that or to buy a car or to buy household utility products or to buy fast-moving consumer goods. All you need to do, you don't even need to go through government data. Just gather your own baseline data, your, your, your baseline studies. Just go into the market and do a market survey. Then everyone will tell you that the economy is in shambles. I can tell you how many people have, have, have sent you text messages, have, have required you to help them with as token as 2,000 Naira, with as token as 5,000 Naira, people that you least expect to ask you for money because the economy is in shambles. So let them be denying themselves. Now, they are saying we have 2.1 billion Naira debt. And the central, and last, this month, the governor of Edo State told us that they had to print money. So who is lying? Who is deceiving who? The economy is in shambles. And the economy will continue to be in shambles, one, because, one, we don't know, we don't know the number the amount of oil, crude oil that has been taken out of Nigeria, to the other sector that supports that we make money from, which is the agrarian sector, which used to be the mainstay of, of our economy in the 60s and in the before the discovery of oil. That sector is also affected by insecurity. It's affected by insecurity. Whether you like it or not, people can't go to their farm. People are being kidnapped left, right, and center. We are having issues with elders and farmers. So food prices will rise up next year. They don't need any rocket science to tell you that. And if you look at the inflation, inflation is an indication of something wrong with your economy. It means that you have too much money in the economy, pursuing less goods. And that is a clear indication. So the Minister of Finance can come, or the Minister of Economic Planning can come and talk grammar and use economic terms to deceive him or herself, but you can't deceive. It's only fools that argues with proof. The proofs are, the, the evidence is, are, what is an evidence? An evidence is a verifiable fact. And the evidences are there for an average Nigerian to see that things are hard. Things are difficult for mm. an average Nigerian. So the economy is, in, and what, what steps has government taken to stimulate the economy? The governors are saying that government should remove petroleum subsidy. If they should remove petroleum subsidy, what happens to the economy? Yes, Mr. Jide Johnson, we saw that story on the Nation newspaper. It's the headline, re it reads, NNPC memo, governors seek end to petrol subsidy. So they're saying that they're opening discussions regarding the NNPC uh, letter from signed by the GMD military uh, that we saw just a few days ago. And they're saying they will back the withdrawal of fuel subsidy to end fleecing the country. So the about the removal of subsidy. You see, on this particular matter of subsidy or no, no subsidy. You remember how many proofs? You remember the proof of NNPC by the National Assembly that involved them. Um, this as of rep member from Kanu, I remember his name La one. Uh, I, I can't recall his first name now. That was, that involved the Tedola and the rest of it concerning bribery or no bribery, what happened with that proof? What has happened with NN, NND, NDC, uh, um, Niger Delta Commission probe? What has happened mm. to it? The governors, whatever will give more money to the governors, they will support it. Whatever will give more money. Because we don't hold them accountable. In the state house of assembly are moribund. They are not, they don't provide any checks and balances to the governors, the governors run the state as if it's a private private enterprise. If you look at what is happening in Imo State between the former governor and the present governor, haven't you seen in Nigeria when there is transition, there is always a fight between the former governor and the new and the governor that takes over from, from, from the other, even if they are from the same party. Come, even if they are from the same, the same, the same, the same party. So the governors will always look for any opportunity that will give them more money because you know. 
hold them accountable. Nobody knows the budget. Nobody knows the budget of, of Nigeria. Nobody knows the budget of NNPC. Nobody knows. You see government spending money without such money being appropriated for. It's illegal. It's, it's an impeachable offense. Mm -hmm. But what do we see? If you raise that issue, we bring religious sentiment into it. We bring ethnicity into it. We bring other 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 things. You see, poverty does not know the color of your skin, does not know where you come from. Um, insecurity does not know whether you're APC member or you're PD member, or whether you are political, like most Nigerians are. So we begin to bring those issues in when some people begin to ask questions, or you call them are you in the opposition? The moment you begin to raise all right, Mr. Nigeria, Johnson. But, just before we I'm just sure. wrap, just before we wrap this up, uh, one final uh, story that caught my attention is the stampede in Imo State Secretariat, and uh, uh, many feared uh, dead uh, over that. And of course, another police station uh, hit in Abia. The the insecurity or the speed of insecurity in the southern eastern part of Nigeria is becoming very alarming. And uh, where do we head? What are the preferable um, solutions, if I may ask? The solution. The solution. The solution is look, as the president addressed us as a nation concerning the security issues we have, have they called a council of state meeting concerning the security issues we have? Has, has that been that's the essence of that institution? The council of state will provide is an advisory body for the president. Has there been a, a meeting between the president and all the governors or all that stakeholders? for them to look at how they can tackle the security. The only essence is that we need to collaborate, like the president said. But what steps has the president take, taken with, with respect to collaboration? You see, we see the issue in Imo State started and it as, as, a, as a small strike of a match. It has, it has snowballed into a firestorm. The police stations are being attacked. Now people, there was a stamp, the, the, the country home of the governor Cars in this country were set ablaze. Policemen were being killed in police station. Is that not enough to declare a state of emergency? Is that not enough for the president? Look, just imagine if they should kill one American. What happens in America? In other crime? What's the value of the life of an average Nigerian? We don't value life because we value life. We pay. We pay. We pay much uh, uh, prominence. We give much 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 prominence to, to to it because this issue the president cannot afford to sit in national rock he needs to go around nigeria and see the situation of things in nigeria when things happen in lagos the governor of lagos said we leave lagos to go to national rock and show the president picture when things happen in imo state the imo state the imo state governor will leave imo state and go to national rock and show the president the 19 state governor will go to national rock and have a meeting with the president he is not the president of national rock is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The president can go anywhere. So let the president take a tour of Nigeria and see the situation of things for mm -hmm. himself. He does not need his aides to bring him issues. Some of the issues, they were it. it. Some All right, of it, Mr. Johnson. They will give some things. Yeah. All right, Mr. Johnson, that's as much you? as we can take uh, on the off the press uh, for today. And then yeah, we, uh, we really need to address the issue of security in Nigeria. Yes, thank you, you very and much. Have a wonderful. And have a wonderful Friday. Yes. And make sure you enjoy yourself tomorrow as workers they take it now for us. We would actually be back here. But no it's fine. It's no fine. holiday for journalists. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, well, um, I think you have your time off. So the day you have time off, spend time with your family. Uh, all right. Sure thank you, Mr. Johnson. Right, we'll show sure will. Yeah. Okay, so we'll take a break here and return with Today in History. Um, not very great news, 2012 and uh, 1966. Just stay with us.